And now chapter 4 of the Antialila, Sanatan Goswami visits the Lord at Jagannath Puri. When Sanatan Goswami returned from Vrindavan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu affectionately saved him from his determination to commit suicide. Then after testing him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu purified his body. All glories to Lord Chaitanya. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Chandra. And all glories to all the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Srila Rupa Goswami returned from Jagannath Puri to Bengal, Sanatan Goswami went from Mathura to Jagannath Puri to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sanatan Goswami walked alone on the path to Jarakanda forest in central India. Sometimes he fasted and sometimes he would eat. Because of bad water in Jarakanda and because of fasting, Sanatan Goswami contracted a disease that made his body itch. Thus he was afflicted with itching sores from which fluid oozed. In disappointment, Sanatan Goswami considered, I am of a low caste and my body is useless for devotional service. When I go to Jagannath Puri, I shall not be able to see Lord Jagannath, nor shall I always be able to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I have heard that the residential quarters of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are near the temple of Jagannath, but I shall not have the power to go near the temple. The servants of Lord Jagannath generally move about tending to their duties, but if they touch me, I shall be an offender. But therefore, if I sacrifice this body in a good place, well, then my unhappiness will be mitigated and I shall attain an exalted destination. Yes, during the Ratha Yatra festival, when Lord Jagannath comes out of the temple, I shall give up this body under the wheel of the cart. After seeing Lord Jagannath, I shall give up my body under the wheel of the cart in the presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This will be the highest benediction of my life. Having made this resolution, Sanatan Goswami went to Nilachal, where he inquired directions from people and approached the residence of Haridas Thakur. He offered his respects to the lotus feet of Haridas Thakur, who knew him and thus embraced him. Sanatan Goswami was very eager to see the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, Haridas Thakur said, The Lord is coming here very soon. At that very moment, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after visiting the temple of Jagannath to see the offering of Upala Bhog, or morning refreshments, came with his other devotees to see Haridas Thakur. Seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they both immediately fell flat like rods to offer obeisances. The Lord then lifted Haridas and embraced him. Haridas Thakur said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Here is Sanatan Goswami offering his obeisances. Seeing Sanatan Goswami, the Lord was greatly surprised. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came forward to embrace him, Sanatan backed away and spoke as follows, My Lord, please, please do not touch me. I fall at your lotus feet. I am the lowest of men, having been born of a low caste. Besides that, I, I have infections on my body. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, however, embraced Sanatan Goswami by force. Thus the moisture oozing from the itching sores touched the transcendental body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu.
The Lord introduced all the devotees to Sanatan Goswami, who offered his respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of them all. The Lord and his devotees sat on a raised platform, and below that sat Haridas Thakur and Sanatan Goswami. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inquired from Sanatan about news of his well-being. Sanatan replied, Everything is auspicious because I have seen your lotus feet. When the Lord asked about all the Vaishnavas at Mathura, Sanatan Goswami informed him of their good health and fortune. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu informed Sanatan Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami was here for ten months. He left for Bengal just ten days ago. Your brother Anupam, he's now dead. He was a very good devotee who had firm conviction in Raghunath. Sanatan Goswami said, I was born in a low family, for my family commits all kinds of irreligious acts that violate the scriptural injunctions. My Lord, without hatred for my family, you have accepted me as your servant. Only by your mercy is there good fortune in my family. From the very beginning of his childhood, my younger brother Anupam was a great devotee of Raghunath, and he worshipped him with great determination. He always chanted the holy name of Raghunath and meditated upon him. He continuously heard about the activities of the Lord from the Ramayana and chanted about them. Rupa and I are his elder brothers. He stayed with us continuously. He heard Srimad Bhagavatam and talks about Lord Krishna with us, and both of us examined him. Dear Vallabha, we said, please hear from us. Lord Krishna is supremely attractive. His beauty, sweetness, and pastimes of love are, they are just without limit. Engage yourself in devotional service to Krishna with both of us. We three brothers shall stay together and enjoy discussing the pastimes of Krishna. In this way we both spoke to him again and again. And because of this persuasion and his respect for us, his mind turned somewhat toward our instructions. Balaba replied, My dear brothers, how can I disobey your orders? Initiate me into the Krishna mantra so that I might perform devotional service to Lord Krishna. After saying this, at night he began to think, how, how shall I give up the lotus feet of Lord Raghunath? He stayed up all night and cried. In the morning, he came to us and submitted the following plea. Oh, I have sold my head at the lotus feet of Lord Ramchandra. I cannot take it away. That would be too painful for me. Both of you, please be merciful to me and order me in such a way so that life after life I may serve the lotus feet of Lord Raghunath. It is impossible for me to give up the lotus feet of Lord Raghunath. When I even think of giving them up, my heart just breaks. Upon hearing this, both of us embraced him and encouraged him by saying, You are a great saintly devotee, for your determination in devotional service is fixed. In this way, we both praised him. My dear Lord, the family upon which you bestow even a little mercy is always fortunate, for such mercy makes all miseries disappear. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, There was a similar incident concerning Murari Gupta. Formerly I examined him, and his determination was similar. Glorious is that devotee who does not give up the shelter of his Lord, and glorious is that Lord who does not abandon his servant. If by chance a servant falls down and goes somewhere else, glorious is that master who captures him and brings him back by the hair. It is very good that you have arrived here. Now stay in this room with Haridas Thakur. Both of you are expert in understanding the mellows of Lord Krishna's devotional service. Therefore, you should both continue relishing the taste for such activities and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Having said this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got up and left, and through Govinda he sent prasad for them to eat. In this way, Sanatan Goswami stayed under the care of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He would see the wheel on the pinnacle of the Jagannath temple and offer respectful obeisances. Every day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go there to meet these two stalwart devotees and discuss topics of Krishna with them for some time. 
the offerings of prasad in the temple of Lord Jagannath were of the highest quality. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would bring this prasad and deliver it to both devotees. One day, when the Lord came to meet them, he suddenly began speaking to Sanatan Goswami. He said, My dear Sanatan, if I could attain Krishna by committing suicide, I would certainly give up millions of bodies without a moment's hesitation. You should know that one cannot attain Krishna simply by giving up the body. Krishna is attainable by devotional service. There is no other means to attain Him. Acts such as suicide are influenced by the mode of ignorance, and in ignorance and passion one cannot understand who Krishna is. Unless one discharges devotional service, one cannot awaken one's dormant love for Krishna, and there is no means to attain Him other than awakening that dormant love. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Krishna says, My dear Uddhava, neither through Ashtanga Yoga or the mystic yoga system to control the senses, impersonal monism, or an analytical study of the Absolute Truth, nor through study of the Vedas, nor through austerities, charity, or acceptance of sannyas, can one satisfy me as much as by developing unalloyed devotional service unto me. Measures like suicide are causes for sin. A devotee never achieves shelter at Krishna's lotus feet by such actions. Because of feelings of separation from Krishna, an exalted devotee sometimes wants to give up his life. By such ecstatic love, however, one attains the audience of Krishna, and at that time he cannot give up his body. One who is deeply in love with Krishna cannot tolerate separation from the Lord. Therefore, such a devotee always desires his own death. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Rukmini Devi said to Lord Krishna in a letter, O lotus-eyed one, great personalities like Lord Shiva desire to bathe in the dust of your lotus feet to drive away ignorance. If I do not get the mercy of your lordship, I shall observe vows to reduce the duration of my life, and thus I shall give up bodies for hundreds of births, if it is possible to get your mercy in that way. And the gopis in the Srimad Bhagavatam said to the Lord, O oh dear Krishna, by your smiling glances and melodious talk, you have awakened a fire of lusty desire in our hearts. Now you should extinguish that fire with a stream of nectar from your lips by kissing us. Kindly do this. Otherwise, dear friend, the fire within our hearts will burn our bodies to ashes because of separation from you. Thus, by meditation, we shall claim shelter at your lotus feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Sanatan Goswami, Give up all your nonsensical desires, for they are unfavorable for getting shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. Engage yourself in chanting and hearing, then you will soon achieve the shelter of Krishna without a doubt. A person born in a low family is not unfit for discharging devotional service to Lord Krishna, nor is one fit for devotional service simply because he is born in an aristocratic family of Brahmins. Anyone who takes to devotional service is exalted, whereas a non-devotee is always condemned and abominable. Therefore, in the discharge of devotional service to the Lord, there is no consideration of the status of one's family. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is always favorable to the humble and meek, but aristocrats, learned scholars, and the wealthy, they are always proud of their positions. As stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, one may be born in a Brahmin family and have all twelve Brahminical qualities, but if in spite of being thus qualified he is not devoted to the lotus feet of Krishna, who has a navel shape like a lotus, he is not as good as a Chandal, who has dedicated his mind, words, activities, wealth, and life to the service of the Lord. Simply to take birth in a Brahmin family or to have Brahminical qualities is not sufficient. One must be a pure devotee of the Lord. Thus, if a Sapacha or Chandala is a devotee, he delivers not only himself but his entire family as well, whereas a Brahmin who is not a devotee but simply has Brahminical qualifications cannot even purify himself what to speak of his family. Among the ways of executing devotional service, the nine prescribed methods are the best. 
for these processes have great potency to deliver Krishna an ecstatic love for him. Of the nine processes of devotional service, the most important is to always chant the holy name of the Lord. If one does so, avoiding the ten kinds of offenses, one very easily obtains the most valuable love of Godhead. After hearing this, Sanatana Goswami was exceedingly astonished. He could understand and thought, My decision to commit suicide has not been greatly appreciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who knows everything, past, present and future, has forbidden me to commit suicide. He then fell down, touching the lotus feet of the Lord, and spoke to him as follows. My Lord, you are the omniscient, merciful, independent, supreme Lord. Exactly like an instrument of wood, I dance as you make me do so. I am low-born. Indeed, I am the lowest. I am condemned for have all the characteristics of a sinful man. If you keep me alive, what will be the profit? Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Your body is my property. You have already surrendered unto me. Therefore you no longer have any claim to your body. Why should you want to destroy another's property? Can't you consider what is right and wrong? Your body is my principal instrument for executing many necessary functions. By your body I shall carry out many tasks. You shall have to ascertain the basic principles of a devotee, devotional service, love of Godhead, Vaishnav duties and Vaishnav characteristics. You will also have to explain Krishna's devotional service, establish centers for cultivation of love of Krishna, excavate lost places of pilgrimage, and teach people how to adopt the renounced order. Mathura Vrindavan is my own very dear abode. I want to do many things there to preach Krishna consciousness. By the order of my mother, I am sitting here in Jagannath Puri. Therefore, I cannot go to Mathura Vrindavan to teach people how to live there according to religious principles. I have to do all this work through your body. But you, you want to give it up. <laughs> how can I tolerate this? At that time, Sanatan Goswami said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. No one can understand the deep ideas you plan within your heart. A wooden doll chants and dances according to the direction of a magician, but does not know how he is dancing and singing. My dear Lord, as you cause one to dance, he dances accordingly. But how he dances and who is causing him to dance, he does not know. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said to Haridas Thakur, my dear Haridas, please hear me. This gentleman wants to destroy another's property. One who is entrusted with another's property does not distribute it or use it for his own purposes. Therefore, tell him not to do such an unlawful thing. Haridas Thakur replied, We are falsely proud of our capabilities. Actually, we cannot understand your deep intentions. Unless you inform us, we cannot understand what your purpose is, nor what you want to do, through whom. My dear sir, since you, a great personality, have accepted Sanatan Goswami, he is greatly fortunate. No one can be as fortunate as he. Thus Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced both Haridas Thakur and Sanatan Goswami, and then got up and left to perform his noon duties. Embracing Sanatan Goswami, Haridas Thakur said, My dear Sanatan, no one can find the limits of your good fortune. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has accepted your body as his own property. Therefore, no one can equal you in good fortune. What Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cannot do with his personal body, he wants to do through you, and he wants to do it in Mathura. Whatever the Supreme Personality of Godhead wants us to do, 
will successfully be accomplished. This is your great fortune. That is my mature opinion. I can understand from the words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he wants you to write books about the conclusive decision of devotional service and about the regulative principles ascertained from the revealed scriptures. My body could not be used in the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, although it took birth in the land of India, this body has been useless. Sanatan Goswami replied, O oh, Haridas Thakur, who is equal to you? You are one of the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, you are the most fortunate. The mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for which he has descended as an incarnation, is to spread the importance of chanting the holy name of the Lord. Now, instead of personally doing so, he is spreading it through you. <laughs> My dear sir, you are chanting the holy name 300,000 times daily and informing everyone of the importance of such chanting. Some behave very well, but do not preach the cult of Krishna consciousness, whereas others preach, but do not behave properly. You simultaneously perform both duties in relation to the Holy Name by your personal behavior and by your preaching. Therefore, you are the spiritual master of the entire world, for you are the most advanced devotee in the world. In this way, the two of them passed their time discussing subjects concerning Krishna. Thus, they enjoyed life together. During the time of Ratha Yatra, all the devotees arrived from Bengal to visit the cart festival as they had done previously. During the Ratha Yatra festival, Sri Chaitanya Mahab Jagannath. When Sanatan Goswami saw this, his mind was astonished. The Lord's devotees from Bengal stayed at Jagannath Puri during the four months of the rainy season, and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced Sanatan Goswami to them all. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced Sanatan Goswami to these and other selected devotees such as Adita, Nityananda, Srivas, Vakrishvar, Basudev, Morari, Raghava, Damodar, Paramananda Puri, Brahmananda Bharati, Svarup Damodar, Gadadhar Pandit, Sarvabhoma, Ramananda, Jagadananda, Shankara, Kashishvar, and Govinda. The Lord asked Sanatan Goswami to offer obeisances to all the devotees in a way that befitted each one. Thus he introduced Sanatan Goswami to them all just to make him an object of their mercy. Sanatan Goswami was dear to everyone because of his exalted qualities in learning. Suitably, therefore, they bestowed upon him mercy, friendship, and honor. When all the other devotees returned to Bengal after the Rathayatra festival, Sanatan Goswami stayed under the care of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sanatan Goswami observed the Dolayatra ceremony with Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this way, his pleasure increased in the company of the Lord. Sanatan Goswami had come to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Jagannath Puri during the month of April-May, and during the month of May-June, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tested him. In that month of May-June, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to the garden of Yameshvar, or Lord Shiva, and accepted prasad there at the request of the devotees. At noon, when it was time for lunch, the Lord called for Sanatan Goswami, whose happiness increased because of the call. At noon, the sand on the beach was as hot as fire, but Sanatan Goswami came by that path. Overwhelmed by joy at being called by the Lord, Sanatan Goswami did not feel that his feet were burning in the hot sand. Although the soles of both his feet were blistered because of the heat, he nevertheless went to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There he found that the Lord, having taken his lunch, was resting. Govinda gave Sanatan Goswami the plate with the remnants of Lord Chaitanya's food. After taking the prasad, Sanatan Goswami approached Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the Lord inquired, 
By which path have you come? Sanatan Goswami replied, I have come on the path along the beach. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, How did you come through the beach where the sand is so hot? Why didn't you come by the path in front of the Shingadvar gate? It is very cool there. The hot sand must have blistered your souls. Now you cannot walk. How did you tolerate it? Sanatan Goswami replied, I did not feel much pain, nor did I know that there are blisters because of the heat. I have no right to pass by the Shingadvar, for the servants of Jagannath are always coming and going there. The servants are always coming and going without interval. If I touch them, oh, I shall be ruined. Having heard all these details, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, greatly pleased, spoke as follows. My dear Sanatan, although you are the deliverer of the entire universe, and although even the demigods and great saints are purified by touching you, it is the characteristic of a devotee to observe and protect the Vaishnava etiquette. Maintenance of the Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. If one transgresses the laws of etiquette, people make fun of him, and thus he is vanquished in both this world and the next. By observing the etiquette, you have satisfied my mind. Who else but you will show this example? After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Sanatan Goswami, and the moisture oozing from the itching sores on Sanatan's body smeared the body of the Lord. Although Sanatan Goswami forbade Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to embrace him, the Lord did so. Thus his body was smeared with the moisture from Sanatan's body, and Sanatan became greatly distressed. Thus both servant and master departed for their respective homes. The next day, Jagadananda Pandit went to meet Sanatan Goswami. When Jagadananda Pandit and Sanatan Goswami sat together and began to discuss topics about Krishna, Sanatan Goswami submitted to Jagadananda Pandit the cause of his distress. I came here to diminish my unhappiness by seeing Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but the Lord did not allow me to execute what was in my mind. Although I forbid him to do so, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu nevertheless he embraces me, and therefore his body becomes smeared with the discharges from my itching sores. In this way I am committing offenses at the Lord's lotus feet, for which I shall certainly not be delivered. At the same time, I cannot see Lord Jagannath. Oh, this is my great unhappiness. I came here for my benefit, but now I see that I am getting just the opposite. I do not know, nor can I ascertain, how there will be benefit for me. Jagadananda Pandit said, The most suitable place for you to reside is Vrindavan. After seeing the Ratha Yatra festival, well, you can return there. The Lord has already ordered both of you brothers to situate yourself in Vrindavan. There you will achieve all happiness. Your purpose in coming has been fulfilled, for you have seen the lotus feet of the Lord. Therefore, after seeing Lord Jagannath on the Ratha Yatra car, you can leave. Sanatan Goswami replied, You have given me good advice. I shall certainly go there, for that is the place the Lord has given me for my residence. After talking in this way, Sanatan Goswami and Jagadananda Pandit returned to their respective duties. The next day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to see Haridas and Sanatan Goswami. Haridas Thakur offered obeisances to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Lord embraced him in ecstatic love. Sanatan Goswami offered his obeisances and dandavats from a distant place, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called him again and again to embrace him. Out of fear of committing fences, Sanatan Goswami did not come forward to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord, however, went forward to meet him. Sanatan Goswami backed away. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu caught him by force and embraced him. The Lord took them both with him and sat down in a sacred place. 
Then Sanatan Goswami, who was advanced in renunciation, began to speak. I came here for my benefit, but I see that I'm just the opposite. I am unfit to render service. I simply commit offenses day after day. By nature, I am low-born. I am a contaminated reservoir of sinful activities. If you touch me, sir, that will be a great offense on my part. Moreover, blood is running from infected, itching sores on my body, covering your body with moisture, but still you touch me by force. My dear sir, you do not have even a pinch of aversion to touching my body, which is in a horrible condition. Because of this offense, everything auspicious will be vanquished for me. Therefore, I see that I will get nothing auspicious by staying here. Kindly give me orders, allowing me to return to Vrindavan after the Ratayatra festival. I have consulted Jagadananda Pandit for his opinion, and he has also advised me to return to Vrindavan. Hearing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in an angry mood, began to chastise Jagadananda Pandit, saying, Jaga is only a new boy, but he has become so proud that he thinks himself competent to advise a person like you? In affairs of spiritual advancement, and even in ordinary dealings, you are on the level of his spiritual master. Yet not knowing his own value, he dares to advise you? My dear Sanatan, <laughs> you are on the level of my advisor for you are an authorized person. But Jaga, <laughs> he wants to advise you. This is but the impudence of a naughty, naughty boy. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was thus chastising Jagadananda Pandit, Sanatan Goswami fell at the Lord's feet and said, I can now understand the fortunate position of Jagadananda. I can also understand my misfortune. No one in this world is as fortunate as Jagadananda. Sir, you are making Jagadananda drink the nectar of affectionate relationships, whereas by offering me honorable prayers, you are making me drink the bitter juice of Nimba and Nishinda. It is my misfortune that you have not accepted me as one of your intimate relations, but you are completely independent, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hearing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was somewhat ashamed just to satisfy Sanatan Goswami, he spoke the following words. My dear Sanatan, please do not think that Jagadananda is more dear to me than you. However, I cannot tolerate transgressions of the standard etiquette. You are an experienced authority in the Shastras, whereas Jaga, he is just a young boy. You have the power to convince even me. In many places you have already convinced me about ordinary behavior and devotional service. Jaga's advising you is intolerable for me. Therefore I am chastising him. I offer you praise relationship with me. Be qualified that one is forced to praise your qualities. Although one has affection for many persons, different types of ecstatic love awaken according to the nature of one's personal relationships. You consider your body dangerous and awful, but I think that your body is like, like nectar. Actually, your body is transcendental. It's not material. You are thinking of it, however, in terms of a material conception. Even if your body were material, I still could not neglect it, for the material body should be considered neither good nor bad. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Anything not conceived in relationship to Krishna should be understood to be illusion or maya. None of the illusions uttered by words or conceived in the mind are factual. Because illusion is not factual, there is no distinction between what we think is good and what we think is bad. When we speak of the absolute truth, such speculations, they do not apply. In the material world, conceptions of good and bad are all material speculations. Therefore, saying, this is good, this is bad, that, that is all a mistake. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the humble sage, by virtue of true knowledge, he sees with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmin, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog-eater. One who is fully satisfied in knowledge obtained and practically applied in life, who is always determined and fixed in his spiritual position, who completely controls his senses and who sees pebbles, stone and gold on the same level. 
he, yes, he is understood to be a perfect yogi. Since I am in the renounced order, my duty is to make no distinctions, but instead be equipoised. My knowledge must be equally disposed towards sandalwood pulp and dirty mud. For this reason I cannot reject you. If I hated you, I would deviate from my occupational duty. Haridas said, My dear Lord, what you have spoken deals with external formalities. I do not accept it. My Lord, we are all fallen, but you have accepted us due to your attribute of being merciful to the fallen. This is well known all over the world. Lord Chaitanya smiled and said, Listen, Haridas and Sanatan, now I am speaking the truth about how my mind is attached to you. My dear Haridas and Sanatan, I think of you as my little boys to be maintained by me. The maintainer never takes seriously any faults of the maintained. I always think of myself as deserving no respect, but because of affection, I always consider you to be, well, just like my own little children. When a child passes stool and urine that touch the body of the mother, the mother never hates the child. On the contrary, she takes much pleasure in cleansing him. The stool and urine of the maintained child appear like sandalwood pulp to the mother. Similarly, when the foul moisture oozing from the itches of Sanatan touches my body, I have no hatred for him. Haridas Thakur said, My dear sir, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead and are most merciful toward us. No one can understand what is within your deeply affectionate heart. You embrace the leper Vasudev, whose body was fully infected by worms. You are so kind that in spite of his condition, you embraced him. By embracing him, you made his body as beautiful as that of Cupid. We cannot understand the waves of your mercy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, The body of a devotee is never material. It is considered to be transcendental, full of bliss. At the time of initiation, when a devotee fully surrenders unto the service of the Lord, Krishna accepts him to be as good as himself. When the devotee's body is thus transformed into spiritual existence, the devotee in that transcendental body renders service to the lotus feet of the Lord. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, the living entity who is subjected to birth and death, when he gives up all material activities, dedicating his life to me for executing my order and thus acts according to my direction, at that time he reaches the platform of immortality and becomes fit to enjoy the spiritual bliss of exchange of loving mellows with me. Krishna somehow or other manifested these itching sores on the body of Sanatan Goswami and sent him here to test me. If I had hated Sanatan Goswami, and had not embraced him, I would certainly have been chastised for offenses to Krishna. Sanatan Goswami is one of the associates of Krishna. There could not be any bad odor from his body. On the first day I embraced him, I smelled the aroma of Chatu Sam, a mixture of sandalwood pulp, camphor, aguru, and musk. In fact, however, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced the body of Sanatan Goswami, by the Lord's touch alone, there was manifest a fragrance exactly like that of sandalwood pulp. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, My dear Sanatan, do not be aggrieved, for when I embrace you, I actually get great pleasure. Stay with me at Jagannath Puri for one year, and after that I shall send you to Vrindavan. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again embraced Sanatan Goswami. Thus immediately Sanatan's itches disappeared and his entire body resembled the color of gold. Seeing the change, Haridas Thakur, greatly astonished, told the Lord, This is your pastime, my dear Lord. You made Sanatan Goswami drink the water of Jarakanda and you actually generated the consequent itching sores on his body. After thus causing these itching sores, you examine Sanatan Goswami. No one can understand your transcendental pastimes. 
after embracing both Haridas Thakur and Sanatan Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned to his residence. Then both Haridas Thakur and Sanatan Goswami, in great ecstatic love, began to describe the Lord's transcendental attributes. In this way, Sanatan Goswami stayed under the care of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and discussed the transcendental qualities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Haridas Thakur. After they saw the Dolayatra festival, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatan Goswami fully about what to do in Vrindavan and bade him farewell. The scene of separation that took place when Sanatan Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took leave of one another is so piteous that it cannot be described herein. Sanatan Goswami decided to go to Vrindavan by the very forest path Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had traversed. Sanatan Goswami noted from Balabhadra Bhattacharya all the villages rivers and hills where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had performed his pastimes. Sanatan Goswami met all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then traveling by that same path visited the places through which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had passed. As soon as Sanatan Goswami visited a place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had performed his pastimes on the way he was immediately filled with ecstatic love. In this way, Sanatan Goswami reached Vrindavan. Later, Rupa Goswami came and met him. Srila Rupa Goswami was delayed in Bengal for a year because he was dividing his money among his relatives to situate them in their proper positions. He collected whatever money he had accumulated in Bengal and divided it among his relatives, the Brahmins and the temples. Thus, after finishing all the tasks he had on his mind, he returned to Vrindavan fully satisfied. The brothers met at Vrindavan, where they stayed to execute the will of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami collected many revealed scriptures and from the evidence in those scriptures they excavated all the lost sites of pilgrimage. Thus they established temples for the worship of Lord Krishna. Srila Sanatan Goswami compiled the Bhagavatamrita. From this book one can understand who is a devotee, what is the process of devotional service, and who is Krishna, the Absolute Truth? Srila Sanatan Goswami wrote a commentary on the tenth canto known as Dasham Tipani, from which we can understand the transcendental pastimes and ecstatic love of Lord Krishna. He also compiled the Hari Bhakti Vilas, from which we can understand the standard behavior of a devotee and the full extent of a Vaishnava's duty. Srila Sanatan Goswami also compiled many other books. Who can enumerate them? The basic principle of all these books is to show us how to love Madan Mohan and Govindaji. Srila Rupa Goswami also wrote many books, the most famous of which is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. From that book, one can understand the essence of devotional service to Krishna and the transcendental mellow one can derive from such service. Srila Rupa Goswami also compiled the book named Ujvala Nilamani, from which one can understand to the fullest limits the loving affairs of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Srila Rupa Goswami also compiled two important dramas named Vidagda Madhava and Lalita Madhava, from which one can understand all the mellows derived from the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Srila Rupa Goswami compiled 100,000 verses, beginning with the book Dana Keli Kalmodi. In these scriptures, he elaborately explained the transcendental mellows of the activities of Vrindavan.
the son of Sri Vallabha, or Anupam, Srila Rupa Goswami's younger brother, was the great learned scholar named Srila Jiva Goswami. After renouncing everything, Srila Jiva Goswami went to Vrindavan. Later, he also wrote many books on devotional service and expanded the work of preaching. In particular, Srila Jiva Goswami compiled the book named Bhagavat Sandarbha or Sat Sandarbha, which is the essence of all scriptures. From this book, one can obtain a conclusive understanding of devotional service and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He also compiled the book named Gopal Champu, which is the essence of all Vedic literature. In this book, he has exhibited the ecstatic loving transactions and pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. In the Sat Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami set forth the truths about the transcendental love of Krishna. In this way, he expanded 400,000 verses in all his books. When Jiva Goswami wanted to go to Mathura from Bengal, he requested permission from Srila Nityananda Prabhu. Because of Jiva Goswami's relationship with Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, who were greatly favored by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda Prabhu placed his feet on the head of Srila Jiva Goswami and embraced him. Lord Nityananda Prabhu ordered, Yes, go soon to Vrindavan. That place has been awarded to your family, to your father and uncles, by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and therefore you must go there immediately. By the order of Nityananda Prabhu, he went and actually achieved the result of his order, for he compiled many books for a long time and preached the cult of bhakti from Vrindavan. These three, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, and Jiva Goswami, are my spiritual masters, and so also is Raghunath Das Goswami. I therefore offer prayers at their lotus feet, for I am their servant. Thus I have described the Lord's meeting again with Sanatan Goswami. By hearing this, I can understand the Lord's desire. These characteristics of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are like sugar cane that one can chew to relish transcendental juice. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends Chapter 4 of the Antialila, Sanatan Goswami Visits the Lord. <laughs>